Hello and welcome to this video over policy provisions, riders, and options for health insurance. Now there's a lot of carryover between the provisions and riders from life insurance over to health insurance, um, but there are some nuances between some of these that I'll point out along the way. So first let's start with provisions. The first provision is the entire contract provision. The entire contract provision says that the only things that can make up the contract are the application and the policy. So those two things have to be there. Then if any riders were added or if it's been amended in any way by the insurer. Remember, it's all about the documents in a policy. It prevents the insurer from referencing any outside documents at a later date if you have to go to court. Now, the grace period provision is going to differ for health, from, for health insurance um, than it was in life insurance because for health insurance, it will depend on the mode of premium payment, how often you're making your premium payments. Because with your health policies, you could pay them weekly and have a seven-day grace period. You could pay them monthly and have a 10-day grace period. Or you could pay them all other modes, which could be quarterly, semi-annual, or annual, and have a 31-day grace period. So make sure you memorize these numbers, that weekly is seven days, monthly is 10 days, and all other modes is 31. Now let's say that your grace period goes by, you haven't paid your premium, your policy lapses. Well, they have the reinstatement provision. You can get a policy reinstated by paying any back premiums plus interest, improving insurability. Now, upon reinstatement, it is important to note that accidents will be covered immediately upon reinstatement. However, there will be a 10-day probationary period before any sicknesses will be covered. The whole purpose behind the 10-day probationary period is to help prevent adverse selection or sick people trying to commit fraud. These next three are more numbers to memorize. First is the notice of claim provision. If you have a claim, you must give notice of claim to the insurer within 20 days. Now notice to the agent equals notice to the insurer. Once you've done that, then the claim forms provision says they must send out claim forms within 15 days. If you do not receive any claim forms, you can write the nature of your loss on any piece of paper and you will have done your job. So it does not actually have to be on forms from the insurer. And then the proof of loss provision says you must provide them with proof of loss within 90 days, not to exceed a year unless you are in a coma and then they will give you longer. So once again, memorize please. Notice of claim, 20 days. Claim forms, 15 days. Proof of loss, 90 days. Your next provision is called the time of payment of claims. See that word time there? Very important. This is the when provision. It is when are claim payments to be made. Will they be paid immediately upon written proof of loss, usually within 60 days, unless it is for a disability claim. And we learned earlier that disability claims have to be paid at least monthly. Next provision is the payment of claims provision. So similar to your time of payment of claims, but this one is the who provision. It is to whom are claim payments to be made. Well, if I'm the insured, I would want a claim payment to come to me. If I'm dead, I would want it to go to my beneficiary. If I didn't have a beneficiary, I'd want it to go to my estate unless, and this is an important concept, otherwise assigned to a doctor or hospital. So you do need to know that claim payments can be assigned. Next, we have the physical exam and autopsy provision. It gives the insurer the right to have the insured examined as many times as necessary while a claim is pending. However, it will be at the insurer's own expense. So they have to pay for it each time. Next is the time limit on certain defenses provision. This is similar to your incontestability clause for life insurance. However, 
we already know that during the first two years that they can deny a claim because of statements in the application. However, after two years, they cannot deny a claim because of any statements in the application unless, and here's how it differs from your life insurance, there were fraudulent misstatements. So it's important to understand even after two years on health policies that fraudulent misstatements can be contested as long as a health policy is enforced. Next, we have your legal action provision. If you want to bring legal action against a health insurer, you must wait 60 days, but no later than three years to bring legal action against them. So because maybe they haven't paid a claim. Next is the insuring clause. The insuring clause is the heart of the policy. It states who the parties to the contract are, states the amount of coverage, the type of coverage, also states the insurer's promising to pay. Located on the first page, it will always be there. Next, you have your free look provision. Free look is usually 10 days from receipt of a policy to look it over, return it for a full refund. We know it is a 30-day free look for Medicare supplements and long-term care policies. And the other thing you need to memorize about both of those is they are guaranteed renewable. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that means at the end of this chapter. Next is a consideration provision. Consideration, something of value each party promises to the other. So for the insured, their value or consideration would be the answers on the application. Once again, very important how they represent themselves as well as their payment of premium. Consideration on part of the insurer promising to pay in the event of loss. Now this next statement about the consideration provision is important for your test. The consideration provision may be a separate provision in a policy, or it might not even be there at all because all of the information that's already in the consideration provision is included in the insuring clause. And since the insuring clause is the heart of the policy located on page one, it will always be there. Next is a probationary period. We talked about the probationary period in a disability policy. Uh, from when it's first issued before an illness would be covered, but also your group health policies. When you first start a job, if you start in the middle of the year, um, usually have a waiting period before you're eligible to get on the group health plan. That is your probationary period. It's intended for people who join outside of open enrollment. It doesn't have anything to do with pre-existing conditions. It's just for people that want to join in the middle of the year. Next, waiver of premium may be a provision or a rider in a disability policy, but the definition is the same as we learned for life insurance, that if the insured becomes disabled after six months of disability, premiums can be waived on their policy for as long as they're disabled, and they would get reimbursed the premiums they paid during that six-month waiting period. Next, managed care plan. So remember, your HMOs, your PPOs and your POS plans are all called managed care plans. The whole purpose behind managed care is to control their costs. So here are the characteristics. First, they have pre-authorization or prior approval requirements. Before you have a procedure done, you must check with your insurer. Are they gonna cover it? And if they are, how much of it are they gonna cover? These plans use the term usual, reasonable, and customary because costs differ depending on what part of the country you live in. Because what's usual, reasonable, and customary, say in San Antonio, might not be usual, reasonable, and customary in San Francisco. Okay, it depends on where you live, on how much you're gonna pay for any given procedure, or if you happen to go outside of the network, how much you're gonna pay. These plans use what's called concurrent review. This is where they will follow along as you progress through your treatment. Make sure you're getting better and, once again, controlling their costs. They all have a controlled access of providers. You have to pick from doctors and hospitals on their list. Other measures they put in place are coinsurance and deductibles and co-payments. Those are all helping to control their cost. Now, some optional provisions. First, we have the change of occupation provision. The insurer might put this in a disability policy so that if you go from a less dangerous occupation to a more dangerous occupation, then your benefits could go down. 
or if you go from a more dangerous occupation to a less dangerous occupation, your premiums would go down. The misstatement of age provision, remember, even after the two-year period of incontestability, as long as a health policy is enforced, they're not going to deny a claim if they find out somebody lied about their age on the application. It just allows for the adjustment of benefits. And then the illegal occupation or the intoxicants and narcotics provisions just gives them reasons not to have to pay a claim. Now for a couple of riders, we have a guaranteed insurability rider to be added to a long-term care policy or a disability policy, but it guarantees you can add more coverage at future dates without proof of insurability. If you add coverage at a future date, the cost of that coverage would be based on your attained age. How old are you that day? Next, we have an exclusion or impairment rider, which would take away coverage for pre-existing conditions. Now on your test, if you have a question about a rider that takes away coverage, please pick impairment as the name of the rider. It is not called an exclusion rider, it is called an impairment rider because it excludes something from coverage. Now, this is one rider that there is no charge for, okay? So it is, they're not gonna charge you to put this rider on your policy. It is free of charge. And then some exclusions and limitations. For some limitations, maternity may be optional. Mental and emotional disorders or substance abuse are all just limited on their coverage. And exclusions, active duty, military, acts of war, self-inflicted injuries, dental, cosmetic surgery. Now, cosmetic could be covered if it's because of an accident. Care and government facilities like VA hospital treatment or foreign residence or travel is going to be excluded. If you wanna be, remember, if you wanna be covered, if you travel overseas or reside overseas, you have to have a travel accident policy. Here's the most important part of your chapter. These are your rights of renewability or continuation provisions. What these do is they spell out the insurer's duty when it comes to renewing a policy. What you're gonna find out is, do they have to renew you and can they raise your rates? Also, they spell out that the insured always has the unilateral right to cancel at any time. So only one of these would be included in a policy. So let's go through each one and I'll tell you what you need to know. First, a non-cancelable provision says the insurer cannot cancel you and they also cannot raise your rates. This is the only one where they cannot raise your rates. So they cannot cancel you. That means they have to renew you, usually up to a certain age like 65. Now 65 is such a magical age because that's when things change, retirement, that's when Medicare kicks in, Social Security, so that's why they have to be renewed up to 65. Next is a guaranteed renewable policy. This is where the insurer has to guarantee to renew it, usually up to a certain age like 65. However, they do have the right to raise the rates, but here's the key. They can raise the rates on what's called a class basis only. They have to do it on a whole class of insureds. They cannot do it on an individual basis. It's a class basis only. And your Medicare supplements and your long-term care policies, you kind of need those after age 65. So you do need to know for your test that those are guaranteed renewable for life. Your next continuation provision is a cancelable provision. This is where the insurer can cancel you at any time for any reason. But if they do cancel you, two things have to happen. Number one, any claims in progress must be honored. So if you have any claims going on, they gotta continue to pay those. And number two, they must return any unearned premiums. Unearned premiums are premiums that have not been used. For instance, if you paid an annual premium to the insurance company and four months into the year they canceled you, there are eight months worth of unearned or unused premiums sitting at the insurance company. They've got to return those. They cannot keep them. 
And then your last provision is a period of time or a term health policy. This is your travel accident policy. It is only good for that period of time that you're traveling. You do need to know that period of time or term health policies are not renewable. All right, so once again, go ahead and go on to your exam simulator, start working on your bulleted definitions and your test taking skills.